can't fault Frank for wanting his revenge as I was there for the same damn reason myself. At this point, I'm guessing you think Silas Graves is a worse murderer than Jim Reed ever was. No, sir. A man who spent half his life killing somebody's brothers, fathers, sons. I think you were just looking for justice, sir. Is that what I was looking for, Dwight? Is that what it was? Justice? Isn't that why you were hunting the James Gang? The James Gang. Right. I finally found Frank holed up in his mountain cabin, and he was determined to have me dead. It was a pitched battle that could have gone either way. Luckily, I had some dynamite in my possession. Dynamite? On your person? A few sticks, just in case. It's always good to be prepared. Right. I'm just laying out the facts as I remember. Shack? Well, it went tumbling right off that cliff. With Frank James still in it? Yes, sir. But Frank James is still alive, living in Missouri, showing folks around the family farm for 25 cents a tour. I didn't say he died in the fall, now did I? I'm done with this damnable outlaw life! Kill me, don't kill me, do what you will! At this point, I just don't give a shit. I explained to Frank that I had nothing against him personally and that I was looking for someone else. You want Reed? Have at him. I never did like that bastard. I am done here. We parted in peace as Frank pointed out the path to my prey before making his way back down the hill. Lookouts. You bastard! I was determined not to let that murderer escape my revenge again. Wander in willy nilly. I decided it would be better to smoke that some bitch out. Hey, Reed! I shouted. No wonder you're so ornery. Can't be easy being married to Belle Star. While you're off providing for the family, she's spreading her legs for every Tom, Dick, and Cole Younger. Not an attractive woman exactly, but very friendly. At least she was to me. Son of a bitch! It was then that the last bunch of bandits jumped out of hiding. Why won't this asshole give up? Would someone please kill him? Why won't this asshole die?
Eventually, it was just me and Reed. I had waited a long time to face him down, so I could repay him for what he did to my brothers. And repay him I did. Well, I don't know about you boys, but I'm pretty beat. Well, it's too damn bad you never found that Bob character. Seems a shame he never had to pay. Well, funny thing about that. I did have one more chance at him. Six months ago, I heard that Butch and Sundance were back in the States and had gathered up some of their old gang. I tracked them down, hoping that Roscoe Bob Bryant had returned with them. So, you're saying they didn't die down in Bolivia? That's what I'm saying. Forty years I had waited to get my hands on the last of my brother's killers. Not even an army of demons could have stopped me now. Both Johnny Ringo and Jim Reed fell fairly quickly. But the last one... Roscoe Bob Bryant. That son of a bitch had managed to escape my vengeance time and time again. I couldn't even be certain I'd recognize him after all those years. By now, he had to be close to 70. For all you know, he could have been dead. That thought had indeed crossed my mind. As did others. For instance, did my thirst for vengeance turn me into something worse than the man I was after? By this point in my storied career, I had killed more men than Bob Bryant ever had. Nothing could stop me from taking his life. I'd been after that killer forever. From the time I rode with Billy the Kid, but that chapter of my story you already know. Chapter of that fairy tale, you mean? Suddenly it was 1910. There I was, an old man roaming a ghost town dead almost two decades. The town was falling apart, just like me. But I wasn't about to call it quits. Even though the ghosts of my dead brothers were begging me to end what I started so long ago. Mr. Graves, are you all right? Would you like some water? The Wild Bunch knew I was there. They were after a treasure they had hidden before they fled, buried in the grave of a dead amigo. I intended to fill that grave with Bob Ryan's corpse. But like I said, the bandits knew I was on to them. They lured me in and hit me with everything they had. Put a bullet in the
obviously a pre-vape since you sent me a calmness for day. Actually, in that moment, I did not prevail. So I suppose we're talking to a ghost. Funny you should put it like that, Jack. Because when I woke up... Uh, from the dead? There was silence all around me. I could swear to God I saw Billy then. Billy who? Billy the kid. William Bonney. He was shooting at me from a rooftop. Here, there, even over there. So I am right. You are titched in the head. Mr. Greaves, perhaps we should switch you to coffee? You see that old Indian again, too? No, but I did see Billy's killer. Patrick Floyd Garrett. He came at me guns a blazing. But I knew that old war horse had died two years before. I wondered if maybe I was dead too and confronting the ghosts of my past. Perhaps all my sins were coming back to haunt me and, and drag me down to perdition. I saw Henry Plummer throw dynamite at me. In the gates of the cemetery, I saw John Wesley Harden, just like I remembered him. Robert Olliger appeared with his terrible double-barrel shotgun. But no ghost army was stopping me! Uh, my father-in-law got hit with a fallen branch. He spent the rest of his life talking to dogs. Newman Hayes Clanton, William Brocious, John Peters Ringo, they all wanted me dead. Guardians of the Garden of the Dead. George Curry and Harvey Logan, alias Kid Curry, both thirsty for vengeance from the great beyond. Jesse, Woodson, James, and Jim Reed. Each one deader than the next. I thought I would go crazy. Thought? Alonzo Longabar. The Sundance Kid? Like a general leading his legion uh, of the dead. You told us before that you seem alive. He was alive.
voice called to me from afar. It was Robert Leroy Parker, AKA Butch Cassidy, coming at me from out of the fog. Thanks for taking care of that bastard. But the kid wasn't quite deceased. Not yet. Takes more than one little bullet to kill the likes of me, partner. <laughs> <laughs>